connecting. And Yay! Hi, Hi Sarah. Sarah. How, How are, are you? you? I I'm haven't good. seen you in so long. Well, it must have been like 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> but when we were like five. <laughs> <laughs> How have you been? How's Paul doing? Paul is great. Uh, and yeah, we're we in San Francisco. Really happy here. Uh, it's a weird cool. time right now, but you know, yeah. making do, making do. Um, it is a weird time. It's, yeah. it's a very, very strange time, but it's so good to see. I'm so glad you're joining me on this. Yeah, thank uh, you so much for having me. Of it's course, of pleasure. course. <laughs> yeah, you've been doing interviews too, and I've been watching those with, with Jeff Kaner and, you know, uh, who else did you yeah, have? You know, that's Mari. the thing. This, uh, this new norm, uh, it, they, they keep saying social distancing, but I, I feel like we are, it, it's more about physical distancing, but socially we are more connected than ever. Mm -hmm. See, I get to talk to you, catching up with you after so many years. And yes, I've been interviewing people I love and admire. It's been a real wonderful time. Very new, but mm -hmm. fresh. <laughs> no, I like that, that you're thinking of it as, you know, just physical distancing. Because yes, you're right. Yeah. We've been able to connect with different yeah. people that sometimes as with us, we haven't talked to each other. In exactly. A long, long the funny, funny thing is, you know, when I've been on the road all the time, you know, you know um, trying to catch up the next flight or thinking about the concert tonight mm -hmm. and tomorrow night, I didn't really get to connect with real people and real friends. Mm -hmm. And now I'm like, oh, yeah, I miss these people. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and just by sitting at home, it's wonderful. Yeah, it, that's so anywhere. true. It's so <laughs> true. That's so funny. Yeah. So when you were on the road and so busy, you've been doing so many things. I mean, you're a solo artist. You, you play concertos. You do recitals. You've been recording. You're doing master classes. So just a huge variety of things. So what, what would you say the proportion of each thing is? Of, and how do you balance all of those things? <laughs> Um, well, the rule number one, and uh, probably the only only rule, uh, which has been has been for until now, was that I wouldn't travel more than two weeks at a time. So mm. that I would always come home, even if it's one day or two, mm -hmm. I would, you know, <laughs> repack and, and yeah, yeah, and get some energy and and then go again. And in this way, it's also easier with getting flights. It's always mm -hmm, round trip mm -hmm. rather than multiple. And of course, it's it's hard for time zone adjusting. But yeah, you know, um, at uh, it becomes. I think body kind of adjusted over the years that I didn't really feel like I have a certain time zone in my mm -hmm. body. But then nowadays, since end of March I've been waking up in the same bed and same time <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Um, but speaking of balancing um, I think I wanted to get everything ready before the tour begins mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. let's say uh, of course I couldn't keep this promise of two weeks at a time all the time mm -hmm, right sometimes it's five weeks and six weeks but exceptionally Mm -hmm. But even so, you know, um, there are 30 different pieces sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to make sure I would be ready before my first flight. So right. it, when I'm at home, it's more challenging to um, uh, organize the time because I had to, mm. you know, other than packing and packing and also preparing everything, get ready for the next whole tour and also um, spend time with my husband who mm -hmm. has been waiting for so long right <laughs> also all the local friends mm -hmm. saying oh jasmine is in town come have dinner with us you know mm -hmm. so it's actually challenging when i'm at home uh, it was challenging when i was at home um, and then once the tour begins it's Usually it's very breezy. Uh, all I have to worry about is getting on time to the flight, mm -hmm. to the concert, and rehearsal. And right. So on. Yeah. Yeah. But I have to say it has been yeah challenging in time uh, in terms of organizing time. You mm -hmm. know those too. <laughs> yeah. No. No. I I understand that completely because like you, I'm so used to being on the road and 
also have the rule of I don't want to be on the road more than three weeks out of the month and you know coming mm-hmm. on packing and unpacking but yeah challenging being home where you we don't have a set schedule and mm-hmm. you know it's actually almost easier to be working when as you said you prepare and then you go on the road you're all set you just have to show up for rehearsal and concerts and yeah life is pretty straightforward but now it's right. everything is open so there's different possibilities it's yeah and here these days i'm doing a lot of housework i'm a unpaid housewife <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Doing laundries and washing dishes and uh, vacuuming three times a day. (laughs) Well, all the things that you never did before, right? In a way. Yeah, I'm actually enjoying this time. It's it's very new and relaxing. Yeah. Oh, that's good. (laughs) Relaxing is good. Cooking and yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So I've always wanted to ask you because I actually don't know how did you get started on the flute. And did you come from a musical family? Or? Ooh, all the way back there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I am from a very musical, classical musical family, from my mother's side especially. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, my mom, uh, she majored in violin, mm-hmm. and all her siblings played and majored classical music, uh, violin, piano, multiple pianists, multiple cellists, oh, wow. singers. Mm-hmm. Conductors uh, and her mother, my grandfather, was the uh, first generation of the classical musician in Korea. He ah. was a uh, yeah, conductor who founded one of the uh, main orchestras in Korea, and he has been he had been music director then for seventeen years. Mm-hmm. And yeah, he was pretty much self-taught all the different instruments. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He was also composing a lot. And growing up, I thought in my uh, naive mind mm-hmm. that everyone was musician. Because you know? <laughs> everyone in your family was. Yeah, yeah. We were playing something. So it was quite natural that I was listening to music, classical music all the time, mm-hmm. going to my grandfather's concerts, and yeah, playing piano and violin as a hobby. Mm. Um, yeah, but I never imagined that this could be a, a job, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. that you do for the rest of your life, because I thought it was, it, it looked more like a hobby from everyone. And my mom was rehearsing string quartet mm-hmm. in the living room, and she was teaching um, privately at home. Um, but I actually, to be honest, I detested violin. <laughs> Especially because I wanted all my attention from my mom. And every time when the doorbell rang from the students, I was, ah. yeah, oh, yeah, really panicking and really distressed. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> oh, Almost no. from having, oh, another student. <laughs> no, another student taking mom away from you. Oh, exactly. That's so interesting. Yeah. So when did you think that, oh my gosh, I can make a career out of being a musician? Um, that was when I started playing the flute because, mm-hmm. um, well, how it came was from playing the recorder from a music class. Mm. It's cool. And all of a sudden it was so much easier and I felt like I was doing something very special because none of the family members were playing any kind of wind instrument. They're oh, all string okay. players right, and, right. Mm-hmm. and pianists. And I thought, wow, this is something very unique. And I'm quite good at it. And this is so easy. You know, you mm-hmm. just have to lift one finger after another. <laughs> <laughs> you make it sound I thought easy, it was sure, sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I thought the flute was the same way. And, and then uh, when I started playing the flute, my mom was very surprised that I was actually enjoying it. Mm. And then I thought, wow, this could be something I could do for the rest of my life. And yeah, I think that's how yeah, it all, all started. And then later on, even to these days that I feel like flute is really one of the most difficult instruments. <laughs> <laughs> nobody told me that because nobody knew about this instrument. <laughs> right, right. So you had no idea, right? Right. <laughs> So when we met at Curtis, and for those of you who are are viewers, I encourage you to ask questions as well, because I'm reading your comments. 
Um, so when you were at Curtis, and that's where we met, did you imagine that you were going to become a soloist or a chamber musician? Because, you know, some of your early work was as an orchestral musician in Cincinnati and Vienna right, Symphony. Right. So I was very lucky to get an orchestra job, jobs right away after school, Curtis and Juilliard. But it's interesting that, I don't know if you remembered, um, we talked about this uh, during uh, your conducting class. Mm -hmm. That was, I think, in my third or fourth year, probably third year when I was having a hard time because I had some kind of nerve issue in my hand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was attending your conducting class. Was it eight in the morning or nine in the morning? It was, it was 8.30. It was quite oh, early in the morning. Was yeah. That was brutal. I know. No one liked to come, but you showed that, up, so. <laughs> that was the hardest part of this class, because I remember whenever I woke up, opened my eyes, the, the clock says it was, you know, 8.40, you know, something like right. you know, 10 minutes after the class, and, and I lived 5, 10 minutes away. I was mm -hmm. at the 1500 Locus. And I had to debate, shall I wake up and run or shall I just go back to bed? Just go back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but anyway, um, in this year, in, in that year, I think it was my third year, I had to be away of the flute and mm -hmm. because of some nerve issue on the mm -hmm. right hand, I couldn't even hold anything, any pencil, mm -hmm. single pencil or even toothbrush, I had to brush my teeth and my left hand and wow. all that. And yes, I, I, I've seen more than 10 different doctors and one of them was a nerve doctor mm -hmm. and neurosurgeon. And he told me he thinks that it's a dystonia, focal dystonia, and I mm. have to give up my career as a flutist and up until that point in my life, I was only, yeah, super focused to be a great flutist. Mm -hmm. I wanted to learn more about music and the flute. That was my only passion and it mm -hmm. was devastating. And I was crying all the time, depressed all the time. Mm -hmm. And when you're depressed, you take everything in the wrong way. Whatever mm -hmm. people tell you, oh, I'm so sorry about your injury. And then you feel like, oh, he doesn't mean it. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Everything goes to the wrong way in my my head. And I remember you were telling me a little bit similar story of your mm -hmm. own. And that was very, very much encouraging. And I, I still remember to this day. And um, yeah, it was yeah, really, really encouraging and helpful. And it gave me another light. And at the same time, I knew that I was not going to be a conductor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a great story. No, I'm, I'm glad that, you know, something I said helped you at a really yeah, difficult totally. time, but that you did overcome that time. And I mean, you came back to the flute. And I mean, that's a great yeah. success story of someone who... You know, yeah. when, when people tell you, I'm sorry to hear about your story, but then they have not experienced what mm -hmm. I had gone through, but you have, and that made a whole difference. Mm -hmm. It didn't mm -hmm. go to a wrong way. What you right, had. right, right, right. <laughs> no, it's, yeah. you know, that's, it's frightening when something that is a part of you and that, you know, is a huge mm -hmm. expression of yourself. You, you're mm -hmm. not able to do that all of a sudden, and then it makes yeah, you think. Yeah, it was my identity yeah. up to that yeah. point. Yeah. yeah, it's it's a tough thing to overcome, but exactly. I'm glad you did. You know, how did actually how did what? you? How, what was the process of improving that, and what? How long was that like take? A, in the end, it was like a miracle. Um, but but only after it all happened, I could figure out what actually happened. Mm -hmm. uh, it was that uh, when I entered. The Curtis, I was 16 years old, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I was lack of self-confidence, especially being in this, you know, school of my dreams. Mm -hmm. And after I entered in the first year, um, first, I wasn't sure if they really meant to pick me, you know? No. Because, uh, <laughs> you know, it was, <laughs> it was only one opening. Right. Mm -hmm. And in my building, 
and actually in the same floor in the mm -hmm. 1500 locus there was a Taiwanese girl I, I shouldn't say the name uh, but who entered the Curtis at the same year she was a pianist mm -hmm. and I could hear her pian piano practicing all the time Mm -hmm. And after two months or so, I couldn't hear her practicing or I couldn't see her anymore. And the rumor <laughs> says, oh, they made a mistake. They sent a letter to a wrong person with the same name. And, oh my you God. know, that increased my <laughs> fear. Oh, even my more. gosh. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, so, so that was that. And also being 16 years old, mm -hmm. living alone, mm -hmm. um, I didn't know um, how to take care of myself, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was keep skipping meals and I, I just didn't know how to live, you know. Right. And at the same time, I had to go to the high school, mm -hmm. um, full-time high school and full-time uh, college student. That was a lot mm -hmm, to handle, mm -hmm. and also English as a second language, and living in a foreign country. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, all that, I think it was um, too much to handle, and also, mm -hmm. um, you know, Curtis was such a generous school, it still is, that they gave us not only the conducting class, uh, but also the piano, private piano lessons, right? One to one to one, and I took the piano lessons too seriously somehow. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah. So that day. stressed you out too to have that yeah, to be every responsible day for. Yeah, every day a lot of um, time and and um, yeah, and on top of that, see, I'm mm -hmm. not even done. On top of that, at the end of my first year when I finally thought, okay, maybe I can continue doing this. There came my younger brother who was 13 years old mm -hmm. back then, and he came to live with me, the mm -hmm. older oh, sister. Okay. And he, he's not a musician, mm -hmm. but he wanted to live abroad and knowing that the older sister lives in Philadelphia, oh, uh -huh. uh, that was his dream. And it took him to convince my parents for it, for months. Mm -hmm. But somehow it didn't, yeah, it didn't come to their minds that, you know, they have to dis discuss with me as well. <laughs> but anyway, one day he was in front of my door and I became his legal guardian and I had to uh, take care of him and um, yeah register him to the what is his name of the friend select this, oh, okay yeah and I, I had to go to the PTA meeting parent teacher meeting and, I and, had no uh, idea and cooking for him and you know waking up, him up in the morning and, and um, ask him to do homework and helping mm -hmm. his homework and and all that and yeah i think it was yeah a little too much way too much yeah and that stress came to the right hand ah. and it was like in the end it was six months long mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but i had no idea you know if it was going to take six months or 60 years 600 right, years right. And every day, every morning, I felt like, well, well, it has been already two months, three months, and mm -hmm. there's no progress. What am I going to do? Uh, what am I going to do? And I'm, I'm going to this world's best music school, and mm -hmm. I'm not able to play the flute. Right, right. And at the same time, mm -hmm. I had to watch everyone's uh, orchestral rehearsals and student recitals, and mm -hmm. it just crushed my heart. You know, they said, you know, you cannot play, but um, we had to, we have to take your attendance. So you have right. to be there. You have the to show up. Mm -hmm. In the orchestra, and, and every time I feel like, oh, I really want to play again, I, um, I'm feeling jealous that they can play. Right, right. 
I had a tingling sensation in my right hand. Mm -hmm. and then, um, yeah, I should have known by then that mm -hmm. it's related to the stress, but I had no idea because I never thought about this thing, body and soul. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it happened from the summer on in my third year. And then by the time, at the end of this brutal one semester without playing the flute, mm -hmm. uh, I went home in Korea in the winter break over mm -hmm. the Christmas. And by the time I think I, I was exhausted emotionally, mm -hmm. I thought, okay, maybe I cannot play anymore. Let's just go home. I'm not going to bring my flute. Mm -hmm. And it was nice to see my family uh, welcoming me, even mm -hmm. me without a flute, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just as a like, person. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can be very much loved without the flute, and I don't have to play the flute. Let's just enjoy. Mm -hmm. And instead of waking up every morning and try to play again. Right, right. And then, yeah, I think when my heart and soul were healed mm -hmm. and was, the hand was slowly coming mm -hmm. back mm -hmm. so I started from slow pieces like Schumann mm -hmm. romances and so on and yeah it was a really dramatic experience mm -hmm. for that age teenage year and also to to look at it positively mm -hmm. I really appreciate that this happened because during this time every day I thought you know if I ever get to play the flute again, I'll mm -hmm. be so grateful every day. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter what happened, what kind of hardship mm -hmm. happened in my life, I'll be okay as long as I play the flute. Right, right. Thank you. Yeah, it gave me in the end a really big strength because mm -hmm. later on, of course, uh, hard, hard life hit me hard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then I always had to think back that time that you mm -hmm. know I can still play the flute so yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's wonderful though that at such a young age yeah. too that you know you figure that it's all connected you know the physical exactly. and the psychological and the emotional that you know you're a whole person and, it, and it's mm -hmm. you know you have to treat yourself as a whole person and right and yeah and not more aware of the posture just mm -hmm. in case you know and the stress level yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So important. Yeah. so important. There's so a question I'm reading here. It says, Angelina says, I was wondering if you had any tips for faster double tonguing. Very Whoa. specific question. <laughs> Practice. <laughs> <laughs> I always tell the students, you know, if you think the answer is practice, don't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, uh, okay, since you asked, I'll try to answer my best, short as possible as well. Um, you know, a lot of flutists, they think about sound all the time and how to play faster. And we play scales, but not every student pra practice the articulations. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, did you say Angelina? Yes, Angelina? I think so. Angelina, yeah. Um, yeah, you should practice articulation also every day part of your daily routine so there's tone exercises for your sound and the scales for your fingers and tonguing as well because tongue is also part of your muscle and you have to train it mm -hmm. and how do you train the muscles slowly warm up and and make progress little by little every day and um that simple <laughs> <laughs> but doing every day is it's yeah we all know that it's not we all know that yet it's so hard to do right to make that mm -hmm. commitment that that really is what makes yeah. things natural and you're able to do them um mm -hmm. so it was interesting when you said you think the flute is a very difficult instrument because i think there is an impression that it's say easier than the oboe or other wind instruments which i I don't believe. I think they're all difficult. But... Well, I think oboe is probably hard. <laughs> <laughs> you, you might be right. You know, it's a lot of air pressure to handle in your head. But I'm wondering because you have arranged all these violin pieces for flute. And I would imagine that technically that's even harder 
to take yeah. something that was meant for a completely different instrument. So what was the thought process behind saying, I'm going to take Mendelssohn Concerto and I want to play it? I think it came from my childhood days that my mom was teaching violin all the time. And she she had a lot of... Um, like high schoolers preparing for the college audition. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I basically growing, grew up listening to the standard violin reps. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. before I get to start singing the children's song, I, I was singing Mendelssohn violin concertos, mm. in my head, Mozart violin concertos, Haydn violin concertos, Kreutzer sonata, Beethoven, Mm -hmm. Paganini something and and uh, Tchaikovsky something you know right, right. pieces and or Tchaikovsky concertos and and then later on when I went to the music middle school in Seoul um, in the music class ah uh, so this is the Vivaldi's Four Seasons like mm -hmm. oh oh okay that was the name or oh that was the Mendelssohn oh that mm -hmm. was Paganini. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I learned the other way. <laughs> That's so interesting. I always huh. knew the melody, not knowing or not even was interesting what it was called. Right. And then later on, when I listen to all the violinist violinist friends, I feel like, why? Wait a minute! I know this piece. I yeah. want to play it. You know. Uh huh. And I think this kind of eagerness and and passion came through uh, above the technical difficulties mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and of course there were uh, yeah many sections that oh is it even possible and then I, I always thought you know it doesn't matter if I get to play or not because I, I love just trying it out mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it's it's like um, going to a karaoke and uh, <laughs> trying to sing uh, what what you love to sing yeah 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 <laughs> Yeah, it, yeah, it was, the intention was as simple as that. Wow, that's so interesting. It, it does go all the, end, the way back to your childhood. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So in, in the end, of course, I get to learn more um, in technical, difficult mm -hmm. passages. And also this kind of um, fact that, you know, in the beginning, I thought, is it really possible? And then in the end... Um, I feel like, wait a minute, I just did it. Mm -hmm. This kind of a um, little bit of confidence. And also um, when one person does it, mm -hmm. so when I do it now, when I have done it a few years ago, and now when you look back, uh, look ahead 10 mm -hmm. years, right. Um, people will be like, wait, that's a, that's a standard rap for the flute. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. when, when 10 people thinks of this way and 100 people think of this right, way, right. then it is becoming a standard. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. So, wow. <laughs> interesting. Yeah. yeah. So another question from a viewer, what piece of music do you think best expresses this hard time we're having in COVID-19? Ooh. Oh, wow. That's a big question. Well, I mean, many pieces, actually. Um, yeah, when I see the world in general, people, yeah, people dying and also all kinds of conflicts with the Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, the world is actually really dividing. And at the same time, we're trying so hard on the other side mm -hmm. to be together and help each other mm -hmm. and be more generous to each other, connect together. Um, in the end, there are always music that can express and they can, that can um, console your mm -hmm. heart in this situation. In fact, I gathered together um, about 30 different pieces mm -hmm. that can heal your soul during this very rather mm. difficult time on this uh, musical platform called Prime Phonic, mm -hmm. called that playlist called Music for Now. Um, I put um, from all different kind of music, not only flute music, mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of vocal pieces mm -hmm. are 
much soothing to our heart. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I think I put mm, like Requiem from Brahms mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> from Mozart Requiem as well. I put some selections from each pieces mm -hmm. um, and some arias from Handel. Um, what else? some slow movements from violin sonatas mm -hmm. and so on. Uh, maybe um, I'll send you the link later. Yeah, I'd love to see that. In the end, whatever speaks to each heart, it, each individual, it's what it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but to, to reach that point, you have to also explore uh, a lot of music, what speaks mm -hmm. to you, and then pick right, your right. playlist, whatever yeah. heals. <laughs> no, it's a very individual choice, you know, what speaks mm -hmm. to you and what, as you said, comforts and consoles you. And right. yeah, there's so much, you know, speaking of these times, like we are consuming a lot of music online and we're discovering there's a lot of music there. Mm -hmm. um, and we have these choices to make. So it's kind of wonderful in a way. Um, yeah. So speaking of, you know, being online and the internet, you were one of the earlier using, oh, you've frozen for a second. Come back, Jasmine. Okay, you're back. <laughs> you're back? Okay, we froze. Yeah. Um, you were one of the earlier adopters of using online platforms to really, you know, put out your music and yourself. And, uh, you know, I think you have how many thousands, hundreds of thousands of followers, tens of thousands of followers on YouTube or subscribers. And was that a very well, conscious choice for you to say, you know, early earlier on in your career, I want to put this music out there this way uh, to make videos, to be active on social media platforms? Yeah, it's funny that when I first uploaded the video, I was not the one of the first ones. There were a lot of already many performers out there mm -hmm. putting videos. But I think I was certainly one of the very lucky cases that uh, my videos got picked up very quickly mm -hmm. and people started following me a lot. And then only later um, I found out, wow, people are aware of me. Mm -hmm. and, well, maybe I should be a little careful. <laughs> it's a little scary. Uh, very thankful and also, uh, yeah, it made me be a little bit conscious. But even that, it came after like five years after... Mm -hmm. I first posted my video. Um, the interesting thing is that when I see people starting their own social media channel or mm -hmm. YouTube channel, they start looking uh, ahead that, oh, I want to influence more. I mm -hmm. want to be more popular. Uh, but back then, oh my God, I feel so old. Oh, back then. <laughs> yeah, that was actually 10 years ago already. Yeah, yeah. It, the concept of YouTube was not like that. It was something experimental, I think. Right. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I have seen so many other flutists already uh, sharing their videos, and I thought it was very interesting. Mm -hmm. And then um, it, I think it took a while mm -hmm. uh, when I looked back on my own channel mm -hmm. maybe a year or two later mm -hmm. i think i was still in cincinnati symphony mm -hmm. and one of my colleagues um percussionist david came to me saying oh i loved your your youtube videos mm -hmm. that you posted I'm like oh yeah that was some years ago and he said his daughter is 10 years old and mm -hmm. she found my video and she loves it I'm like mm -hmm. wow very interesting and then I went back to my YouTube channel and saw wow already I don't know how many but it was really a lot right right yeah it was uh, very interesting um, but I think um, that was rather a better approach than mm -hmm. these days when people starting now even my brother started uh, uh, a new, new YouTube channel a few months ago. Mm -hmm. He's counting uh, new subscribers every day. <laughs> right, right. Oh, yeah. just leave it, you know. <laughs> yeah. And and then and then he thinks differently, and um, but it doesn't matter how 
he or other people think um, how much I'm conservative or not. But mm -hmm. I think what really counts is like uh, how I started. Just um, it should be something um, you do it for out of passion mm -hmm. and out of mm -hmm. curiosity, right. not like um, in order to get results. Because mm -hmm. I think in this way it tires you. Mm -hmm. At the same, uh, in the in the same way. Um, when I see some parents uh, from young students, mm -hmm. from 10, 11 years old, right, they ask me often, do you think my child is going to make it? <laughs> you know? Oh, what a question. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I think um, if you love something, I think it's important to keep doing it and keep exploring it. And then see what happens that if you keep loving it and mm -hmm. if you um, create some kind of community or um, other people's reactions mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. you can tweak a little here and there and go from there. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you think already the end at your right. beginning, mm -hmm. I think, um, yeah, not only it tires you, but also the purpose is not, yeah, it doesn't serve the good purpose, I think. Right. No, you're, you're saying that it's much, it's organic and authentic that, you know, you have this desire without an end goal in sight, but sort of the process of exploring mm. your passion for music is much more important, which I like. And I, I, I hope that, you know, students hear that and people understand that that mm. you can't assume that I want to be a famous soloist. I mean, life doesn't <laughs> work that way, right? It's, yeah, you, know. you cannot plan too many things. But um, one of the quotes that I loved from Jeffrey Kainer interviewing mm. my teacher a few weeks ago, uh, and he said, uh, the time you spend doing what you love doing, it's never wasted. Mm. But it's, a lot of parents are worried that you know my my children love doing this so much but i don't want it you know but mm -hmm. um yeah when you're so into doing something really passionate right um, it will open up to another door mm -hmm. uh, at some point yeah yeah and that's how i started making vlogs uh last mm -hmm. year mm -hmm. okay and, um I thought it doesn't matter who are interested in my own life, what mm -hmm. I see, what I eat. But I just need <laughs> to, you know. Yeah, you just want to try video. that out. Yeah. And this making videos, it took me hours and hours in the, mm -hmm. in the beginning. Um, my husband was complaining. Oh, you know, remember sometimes you are a flutist, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you, should, you should touch your flute time to time. <laughs> but, but, but I was so into making the videos, it was so much fun. And um, I told him, you know, I, I just love doing it. I, I just don't know how to stop it. Mm. <laughs> and eventually, you know, my passion got a little bit, you know, um, cooler. Uh -huh, right. I can also have the regular life as well. Right. But, <laughs> but because of this crazy time, mm -hmm. um, doing only video editing um, all the time, uh, it helped me um, open another door and like um, during this time interviewing people and mm -hmm. I'm doing also a learning together series that I'm reviewing students videos and, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. talk about it together and um, I think in the end it goes to what you love and um, all these kind of experiences comes together as different vocabularies and then in mm. the end you're one and whole life <laughs> that that's a great overview of things you know looking at it, <laughs> no looking at it from sort of you know the the macro sense before you know you get to the tiny details to say you want this very cohesive so you know uh satisfying life and to do that you sort of have to look at much larger things than just you know having yeah, a single perfect. goal or just practicing double tonguing. Although that's important, right? Because right? <laughs> it's always easier when you do something you love and the time goes by quicker and you can uh, progress quicker rather than there's something and you feel like, 
oh, I have to do this, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then progress is slow, and right, oh, right. I, um, I, let me look at my Instagram, and then <laughs> yeah. I'll go by. You're looking for a distraction, <laughs> right? Because you right. don't want to be doing what you're doing. Right. Um, I'm wondering, you know, as we say, these very strange times, and it's a, a huge disruption to many musicians, and I know I miss performing unbelievably especially since i don't have an instrument my instrument is a group of people so you know that's it's going to be a while before that happens but what do you do you miss performing and what do you miss about it um i miss about playing um simultaneously how do you say the spontaneity mm -hmm. that um i play a little bit this way and then mm -hmm. the other person replies this way right then, right back and uh, you can't do it with virtual concerts uh, no mm -mm. and uh, i've done several of the virtual ensemble duo trios and so mm -hmm. on it's so much harder because you you have to fit in to the previous video that <laughs> were played before right 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 <laughs> and that's not how we should make music mm-hmm and uh, if you think of, um, you know, you know it very well, um, jazz and pop musicians, they play with the clicks, but we cannot, I mean, we should not. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and, and because of that, it also makes it even harder to play with a video that are not exactly on the same beat. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so tricky. many levels it's, of complication no i mean it's i think a skill <laughs> yeah no it's, it's a great point that i don't think some people may not really think about but as you said when you're performing you're having two different conversations one with you and the audience but also mm -hmm. with the people who are playing around you and that mm -hmm. you react to your colleagues and it's not just a a singular you know sort of direct communication you have to sort of talk to everyone around you through music mm -hmm. and yeah, yeah it's bad it's mm -hmm. hard not to have that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I really hope this time it doesn't last too long. And I mean, it is lasting much longer than any of us have expected. Um, I've been getting cancellations every other day for mm -hmm. a very long time. And, and now, since like two weeks ago, I'm <laughs> starting to get about new concerts <laughs> mm -hmm. coming up in two years. So um, I think that's a good sign. Yeah, um, hopefully so. Make us be yeah more hopeful and <laughs> right, exactly, which we need in this this very stressful and strange time. So mm. sort of wrapping up, I I sort of want to ask you if there's something in life, it could be musical, it could be non musical, that you haven't done yet that you're looking forward to doing in the future. <laughs> Oh, um, I don't know. I haven't thought about this. Um, ooh. I guess I don't have one. That's so boring. <laughs> <But> <laughs> no, I just think, you know, I, but, sitting like as we are in our homes and not being able to connect physically with people, you know, <laughs> I always think of you know, what do I look forward to when things are over that sort of sustains me through this? But I thought as a larger question, what are the yeah. kinds of things that you look to I the future think, that I make think you... When I when I see the life <laughs> as a whole, uh, I, I think I am already living my dream, dream mm. life that I always wanted to have. And I think the most important thing is to be con content and happy and I'm sort of the person that I, I don't plan so much long ahead, mm -hmm. but at the same time, on the other hand, I'm very much open to whatever, whatever happens to me mm. in life. So um, whatever <laughs> occupies my interest and passion, I go for it mm -hmm. and then it always opens another door and then life changes a little bit like this. But in the whole, I think the most important thing is to have great people around you mm -hmm. and who, who loves you and who you love. And um, yeah, 
as long as I play the flute, it's okay. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know what else I can hope for. But you've got the flute and, you know, beautiful yeah. music. And as you said, surrounding and yourself. All 10 fingers. It's all working. 10 fingers that are working and you know, <laughs> people around you who support and love you. I mean, that that's a very deeply fulfilling life. And Yeah, I mean, uh, like you um, and many musicians, we've been to all over the world. And in the end, what matters and what city you love, it's basically uh, who, mm -hmm. who are there in that exactly. city. Yeah, exactly. uh, wherever you go and there are great friends, then you're fine. You're in good hands. That's right. <laughs> and life is good. See, when I went to St. Paul to, to sub with the SPCO, mm -hmm. I saw you and Paul, and I felt like home. Yeah, know? yeah. And it was so yeah. nice to see. It's true, yeah, it you know. Really you you re-meet these and see these friends that you haven't seen for a while and reconnect. And mm -hmm. that's what creates the community of musicians and our friendships and this great crazy family we call you know, know. <laughs> all of us musicians on earth because like, so we're all so connected mm -hmm. that's such a lovely note i think to leave on jasmine thank you so much for chatting and, and, you and for staying up late me. and <laughs> it's so i guess it's not that late you. <laughs> and it's so great to see you and uh i hope to see you in person again when this is all over and yeah, really you know to be that. creating music and, and hopefully together sometime and yeah let's do that Yes. Yeah. Be healthy till then and Yes, you too. Keep in touch. I'll be I'll be watching all your videos. <laughs> you too. We'll be watching each other's videos and sending each other all the best. Thanks, Jasmine. Okay. Thank you, Sarah. Take all care. Right. Bye. Bye.